I get off the radio, and uh, I see a, a number pop up on my screen. I'm thinking, is this spam? What is this? And I answer the phone, and I say, hello? And I hear a very familiar voice saying, hey, it's me. I'm out. And it was Craigie. Um, who was calling me to let me know that uh, he was released from jail yesterday morning. And what I heard was a happy and relieved Craig Carton. Uh, He got out uh, about two years earlier than the sentence uh, required, but he did everything he possibly could in jail to try to mitigate his sentence and try to get out as early as he possibly could. Uh, I know Al was a part of an email chain that uh, we've all been on for the last year and Craig has kind of kept us up to date on everything that he was going through. And there was some thought that maybe when this coronavirus hit and they were releasing prisoners, maybe he would have been a part of that release. But that never happened for him. So he had to stay within these classes that he was taking in in jail, uh, as I understand it, uh, to try to uh, limit, uh, you know, his amount that he was going to spend in jail. And he was with his family yesterday. They, they all went to pick him up, uh, as I understand it, um, at the uh, at the penitentiary. And they, they brought him home. And uh, now the real work begins for him, and that's rebuilding his life. And he's paid his debt to society. He did not get out because of coronavirus. He got out because of all the things he was doing in prison uh, to get early release. So I'm, I'm proud of the fact that he did that. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his family. I'm happy, really, for his kids uh, who've had a tremendously difficult ordeal over the last three years. Um, I do believe he deserves a second chance, uh, whether it be here at our station or another station. He's too talented not to be on the air somewhere. Um, you know, obviously there's been a lot written in the papers the last couple of days about whether or not he would ever come back to WFN. And of course, the hiring of Chris Olivero as our uh, I guess you you say station manager, um, the the guy that's basically running all of uh, intercom stations in New York, market manager, I should say. Uh, he was the one to put us together back in 2007, and he is extremely c- close with Craig. So Craig does have an advocate at WFAN. Craig has paid his debt to society. He still has a few hurdles that he has to get over uh, so he can start making a living again, uh, and, and rebuilding his reputation and rebuilding his life. And uh, when I heard him yesterday morning, I have to tell you, man, it felt great. It felt great to hear him out, and it felt great to hear him speak the way that he normally speaks. And listening and reading all those emails, I'm sure, Al, you felt this way. Um, it was it was Craigie just, it just with, without the voice. Yeah, I mean, we were uh, on those email chains and, there were times he was talking about getting out early. Then other times the next email would come through saying, now I don't think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So it was going back and forth. Then I didn't hear from him for about a week or so. And then, uh, yeah, the phone rang yesterday and he was on the other end driving in a car heading home. Yeah. So that was it's, cool. It's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, I saw your your tweet to him. What up, Spank? Uh, you know, obviously that's how he would re- refer to a lot of the callers that would call in and everything else. But, you know, he's back and he's out. And uh, like I said, he's paid his debt to society. He deserves another chance in my eyes. Um, Whatever issues we had uh, after this whole thing went down, they're gone, man. As far as I'm concerned, they're gone. Uh, You know, he you know, Greg, you you came in and you basically kept this thing going and we're going to stay together as long as I know, as long as you'll you'll have me and uh, we'll continue to do what we do and. And hopefully, uh, Craigie someday will will be able to get back doing what he does and does so well. Yeah, and you mentioned his family, and that was the thing that I thought about in the beginning of this thing, and that's the thing I thought about yesterday. Because, you know, when you're someone like Craig who was on the air for as long as he was at the top of his game, you know, he gets called a lot of things, right? You know, he called the good names, bad names, uh, all that stuff, because he was a guy that, uh, of course, a lot of opinions would fly around about but really what he was called and the most important thing he's called his dad and when this whole went down i thought about his family losing their dad for a little bit and when he got out yesterday getting that dad back um into the house and back into their lives in the way that he needs to be was uh was was great to hear so that's the part that definitely put a a smile on my face 
and and then knowing the strong relationship that you guys had with him for all those years, knowing how important it was for you to see your friend uh, get out and get his life started again, also made me feel good. And as far as him getting back on the radio, sure. I mean, someone as good as him who has paid his debt, as you mentioned, I mean, it's not like he got away with anything. I mean, he went to jail for a year, and there's got to be some other things that apparently he has to go through. Uh, he's going to get another chance. He's too good not to get another chance where that's going to be and when that's going to be uh, i don't know um of course you know when you talk about this show and, and moving on and me being here it's probably and most likely not going to be here but that doesn't mean it can't be on the radio station years down the road you know somewhere else who knows i i don't know um but i am happy that uh he is out and i'm happy he's going to get another opportunity and he was someone that of course helped out this radio station in a major major way and I, those who were successful at this radio station, I will always be indebted to to be able to keep this thing going, to give me this opportunity to be here and also have success of my own. So even people that I dislike, like Mike, uh, I, I am indebted to because he is someone who has done a great job for this radio station for a very long time. You know, I miss Mike and Chris. Joe Beningo, uh, guys who have been here for a very long time, Craig Carton, you, Boomer, uh, all those guys always hold a special place in my heart to make this radio station as strong as it is, and it's uh, it's absolutely a, a privilege for me to, to keep it going. And if he's a part of the team again and, and we are teammates again, I think that that would be absolutely awesome because I know uh, that you know this is he, – he, he did a bad thing, served the price, paid the price – uh, and now this is where the redemption story starts for him at all levels. And if he th- if he thinks he's getting shortstop back and leading off, that ain't happening. <laughs> that ain't happening. That's one thing he's not going to get back. I can tell you that right now because I got a good shortstop and I got a good leadoff hitter. So, but um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. And uh, again, like I said, when he called me yesterday morning, ten thirty three. Um, it was great to hear his voice uh, because we hadn't spoken in a long time. You know, this has been a long three-year ordeal. It started around this time. We started noticing some weird things happening in the summer of 2017, and here we are in the summer of 2020, and I don't think things can get any weirder than they have been this year. Um, and it was it was interesting. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I, and I said, you know, was Craig – they asked me, was Craig – able to follow like what was going on in the world and i'm saying yeah i think pretty much i don't necessarily know how deep he was able to get into everything that's been happening but uh, yeah they they follow what's going on in the world and he got emails and you were able to email him things i'm sure a lot of people were sending him emails the email thing is a weird thing with people in prison isn't it al yeah they only have a supposedly a short list of people that they can communicate with right you had to be on the email list but I know, like, uh, they had all, all TV set up. You know, one was always on ESPN, one was always on the news channel. So I, it wasn't I think a he, sports bar, though. It you was know, not a sports not, bar, no. no. Not, it was a sports bar, right? You, but you had to go through a thing called Core Links, was the email situation that you had to go through, That the app Core Links. And I think they sent me an email yesterday that Craig was released. Yes. And I think that. Did they? Is that what happened? Is that what came through? I got one this morning that said uh, the, this prisoner is no longer allowed to accept emails because uh, he's not in anymore. So don't email him here. Right. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. You know what? I, I got it right here. Hold on. Uh, no longer has access to the trust fund limited inmate computer system. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, he or she may not send or receive messages. And then, and then it's something else. But that's pretty much. <laughs> what it says so now i guess now i guess we can uh d- delete that or what do we do yes do you we, could delete that out of that system? i just deleted it you did you, yeah like, you didn't like because uh, we have an account yeah i didn't sign out or anything <laughs> i just yeah well let's hope you never have to use it again with any other friends right <laughs> like saying. seriously hopefully it's deleted for good you don't you don't want to be using that thing Man, I just felt like, you know, because obviously they were reading everything we were sending. Yes. So you got to be, you know, and there's only, he could not download attachments and things of that nature. So you couldn't send like an attachment to like a, a bit we did or any of that. No stuff. pictures, nothing. No pictures, anything. Yeah. Just, 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 just basically bland email writing. Right. <laughs> yeah, but for someone who's in that situation, bland email writing with the people that they care about is awesome, right? I mean, that's yeah. something that is a is a treat. 
Man, I could, I, I, you know, the fact that he was in there for a year. I always felt Boomer on the email thing yeah. because I, I would go back and forth with him too. What do you write? How you doing? Right. We're doing great here. It was it was a weird thing, kind of. You want to stay in contact, but I always felt I don't know. I felt strange hitting send sometimes. Yep. You know. Yeah, you didn't want to write. You didn't want to say how good news, really good news, because you felt like well, you're writing to somebody who's in prison. You don't want to tell them all good news, but then you didn't want to complain about anything. Things are great. I'm on my bike. I'm playing golf. I'm hanging out. I'm in the boat. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Gio wants to take me fishing. We're going on vacation. Yeah, no, I didn't do that. But then, but but then you couldn't all, you also couldn't complain about bad news and go, I had to wait in line today for my groceries. (laughs) You know, (laughs) Jerry's right. I would sit there sometimes go, what am I right here? Right. He's he's worried about the line at 3 p.m. for oatmeal. Right. (laughs) Yeah, great. It really nuts. Yeah, you didn't know what to do. But but his emails were hilarious, actually. I I don't know if he was writing a book with his emails. Maybe that's what he was doing. And uh, but they were funny. They were and they were long. We were the test pigs. I think so. But I I would just I would just always write back. You know, you know things are okay. Things are good. He would ask about Gunner and Sydney, and you know, unfortunately, he wasn't able to make Sydney's wedding last year. And you know, and all that other stuff. So, you know, it was kind of more family emails back and forth, that kind of thing. But yeah, well, he's out and he's right. back. So here we go, Spank. Yeah. <laughs> Lock and load. Uh, did, did he mention to you, like, the experience itself? Was it either better or worse than he had envisioned? Because I know for many years he talked about his biggest fear was being imprisoned. Uh, on the air, I had heard that, so I, I wonder, did he did he say like, yeah, it wasn't as bad, or it was as bad as he thought? Or? No, there, there were emails where you could feel the frustration coming through. There was no question about that. There were certain things that only Craig could describe that you would read, and you'd be like, oh my god, I can't believe he's got to go through this. And there was a lot of that. There was a lot of different, uh, you know, descriptions of some of the other prisoners and things of that nature. <laughs> um, I, I don't care what you say. At the end of the day, it's still prison, and it's not sure. a nice place to be. Of course. It's, yeah. it's miserable. Yeah. And he's very lucky that he got out within a year, and he did everything that they asked him to do within prison to get out early. And now he'll have to go through a few other things, like I said, uh, before he's totally, totally free to be able to, to do what he needs to do as he moves forward. But uh, I, I'm, I, was, I was elated yesterday when I got the phone call. It, it made my day, actually. So, And hopefully... Uh, it made your guys' days and and uh, his friends and his family and everybody else. Uh, the saga is over, but now the second part of his life uh, begins, and he's got to start, uh, you know, rebuilding the reputation and 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 try his hand at redemption. And everybody deserves the opportunity to do that. 